Hello, welcome to Enzyme Ranch's trail trimming project. Uh, this is Sister Robinson and uh, she's going to demonstrate some tips for clearing trails. Uh, first tip is to come equipped with gloves, uh, pruning loppers, and a pruning saw. And probably a good idea to wear long pants, boots, and protective clothing. Now you're seeing this in the fall. You'll probably likely be trimming in the spring, but you'll get the idea. Here we go. Sister Robinson's going to do a little evaluation of what needs to be done on this trail. Obviously there's some things overhead. Um, she's taken a look there at the vine maple that needs to be cut and the bramble along the trail. So uh, if there are rocks on the trail, those need to be pitched off. However, we leave the uh, loamy material on the trail, leaves, pine cones, pine needles, which will mulch the trail and actually keep them from getting dusty. This is a good example of finding a root crossing the trail that could trip someone. So uh, Sister Robinson is pulling it up so her saw doesn't get in the dirt and uh, sawing off the root. This is an example of the kind of bramble that needs to be trimmed. I'll show you some individual plants. This is with yellow leaves, but this is a uh, wild rose. That's one of the plants that grows all over. This is a type of hazelnut and it grows all over. Get a close-up of those leaves. And then we have this. I'm not sure what it's called, but that is what all that is. And it needs to be trimmed back very badly. Get a close-up of those leaves. There you go. And they're wiry, stemmy things coming from the ground. This is an obnoxious, thorny little plant that isn't very pleasant on trails. If you see that, please cut it. This is Oregon grape. It will need to be cleared also. What you're seeing here is vine maple. It uh, can be tree size or it can be bush size. Vine maple is a rapid growing plant here, tree, and uh, you can see how it encroaches on the trail and uh, it will do that very quickly so be ruthless when it comes to clipping back vine maple please. If you come across a log or something else large across the trail, let your leader know so we can arrange to get a chainsaw to cut that out. In case you've never seen stinging nettle, it's uh, not real pleasant to get a sting from it. Uh, this is what it looks like. It has a kind of a uh, berry thing on the top and fuzzy little spikes under the leaf. Let's see if I can show you that. Well, this time of year it doesn't look like they're very bad, but in the spring they're evil, so steer clear of stinging nettle. Okay, we're at the beginning of the trail and we're just going to work our way along, uh, clearing anything that's in our way, lopping anything that's in our in our way, so we'll lop these uh, brambles as we go. Please lop them at the base. That will keep them from being right back in the way next time. Um, Sister Robinson, I think I see uh, berry vines there. Uh, berry vines need to be pulled up and uh, lopped so uh, they don't get tangled around feet. Here's a 
an example of a branch that's just poking out on the trails. It doesn't really need to be clipped, but it does need to be moved and pitched back away. We have an example here of a branch that's growing in the direction of the trail. It's not really a problem right now, but as it grows, it will be. So even if things are growing in the direction of the trail, we'd like to get them cut back and pitched off the trail as well. This is a vine maple and we're going to lop that. Now this is uh, an example of the wrong way to lop a branch. First of all it didn't get lopped clear back to the base and second of all it was lopped at an angle and this creates a spear so if someone was to be going along here on a horse and fall off it could impale them. That would be, not be a good thing. So if you'll come back Sister Robinson and lop that at the base nice and flat so we don't have any point. That's great. Alright and then we're going to uh, lop this branch sticking out over the trail. Now the loppers aren't very strong so they'll do up to about an inch thick and uh, at this point now because the loppers can't do this thicker branch, we'll use the saw down here at the bottom to go to the base and saw that off. So go ahead and cut the stinging nettle, but just be sure it doesn't get you. The trail should be cleared so that there's about 10 to 12 feet overhead. Some of it you won't be able to reach, but if there are branches growing out toward the trail, uh, like these for instance from this tree, then it would be a good idea to lop those off. Here you have the after the clearing of the trail. Notice it looks much more open, especially at the front. Um, let's check and see what things you can observe have been done to make it look this way. Branches, bramble, uh, things on the ground, three feet both sides of the trail have been removed and pitched back into the forest branches have been lopped off at their base. Branches are cut flat so they don't leave a spear for someone to fall on. Overhead branches and branches growing in the direction of the trail have been clipped away. One thing you may notice is the absence of vine maple that was growing along the trail before. Uh, remember, vine maple needs to be cut back even farther than five feet off the trail if it looks like it's going to grow the direction of the trail. Leaves and pine cones, soft material, has been left on the trail. Branch is too large for the saw or clippers can be left for the chainsaw. So this is what the trail looks like after it's clipped. Thank you, Sister Robinson, for your help, and thank you, volunteers, for your help. You'll notice Sister Robinson is taking the trash with her as she goes to dispose of. Have a good day! You bet! And there we have it, the clear trail. Looks like about a 10-foot wide and high tunnel. Um, again, hard to tell in the fall, but in the spring you'll see all those leaves cut back and it'll look more emphasized. So thank you for coming today. Thanks for your help.